you already sent it to David. Are you there? Yeah, you'd already sent it to him, that sound.
<laughs> what, do you think I'd come abroad and not get a pizza? Does anyone like the new drip? <laughs> Hello, Hello there. there. So now I think it would be the appropriate time to um, explain the madness that happened in Monaco. So um, basically what went down is pretty simple. We had to wait an hour and a half to get the transport on the Friday night to get down to the thing. It was an hour and a half late. We then got dropped in the middle of nowhere by the taxi man, having no clue where it is we needed to go. I'm the taxi man, and I took you where you wanted to go. And um, we essentially walked like headless chickens around to try and find the yacht. As you can imagine, we were not very happy. Um, all in all, the service and transport and knowing where the hell it is we need to go, the information has been very unclear and it's the whole experience has been very disorientating in terms of the hospitality segment's gone the boat was lovely to be on but um after a while it got a, it got a bit tedious and it's it's um yeah all in all it's been it, it in some places it's been a bit of a mess but we're happy to be here now we finally made it and um we can now you know sort of watch the grand prix and all of its glory um i've gotten some new drip so I don't support McLaren, but I like the outfit better than the other ones. So um, yeah, I'll keep my eyes off for those today. But yeah, it's time for the big moment. So instead of maybe going to lap 30, they'll try to go to lap 40 or 45 out of the 78 lap race. And then they'll be preying on this. They'll be preying on a safety car, a virtual safety car, a small accident, someone maybe hitting the barrier, or alternatively a little bit of rain, because that gives them a free pit stop. And then they've got the software, and everybody else has got the hard because you have to switch. And that is their opportunity. We've got the parents of a racing driver here, Pierre Gasly. Pierre was one of my, uh, he was one of my tips for the top six. But with the incident yesterday, and not being able to actually then do his final lap time, he's down at the back. Pierre's probably a very good example of someone that can take advantage of that. A clever driver, an aggressive driver, and a driver that knows how to be quick around here. So if you look at people in that position, then they'll be doing that alternative strategy. However, you do need a little bit of good luck around here. You need a little bit of fortune, there's no question. That fortune keeps you out the barriers, that fortune keeps you in the right positions. And uh, when I, if I'm being very honest, I think it's one of the top four that's going to win. I said about Charles Leclerc, I think Sergio Perez is the red one correct, not Max Verstappen on this occasion. Sergio has delivered fantastic, I would say consistency in his speed this weekend. And uh, at the same time as well, He's got a bit of momentum because uh, I think he's now feeling himself much more comfortable in Red Bull than he was before. A little bit of a dark horse, Carlos Sainz. Don't forget him because Carlos has also got the speed and capability to deliver that first Ferrari victory and his first victory as well. And uh, so in, in reality, I think it's going to come from those four. And then afterwards, if there's Brits in the crowd, which I know there are a few, then Lando Norris is your man. I've got to say, George Russell did a sterling job in qualifying. The Mercedes, I can only say it looks like a pogo stick. It doesn't look like a racing car. It's jumping everywhere. It looks horrible to drive. And uh, he was able to do a, a deliverance of one lap in qualifying. But there's a difference. One lap or 78. One time taking the risks, playing the lottery up like you do at the casino, or doing it 78 times. So in reality, you need a car underneath you that's compliant, it tells you what it's doing, it gives you the information, it tells you when it's actually losing tyre drift, not one that you are just reacting with. And so therefore, I would definitely put my money on Lando being what I would classify as the best of the rest. Because the reality is, those front four, Ferrari and the Red Bulls, 
are just going to be ahead and the rest are fighting for the scraps in this particular situation. The, when we talk about uh, just one other last little point before I throw it open to some questions. You know, we, we sit there and we watch the onboard cameras and I mentioned that to some people, by the way, this gentleman's from my hometown in Scotland, in Dumfries. So he's the only person that doesn't need subtitles when we're talking. But um, when you see these onboard cameras and you see them threading the needle coming up to Casino Square through Massey, through the left-hander, and then just clipping the barrier on the right, left and right, or alternatively exit the chicane or coming into the back, that is like playing a PlayStation because that camera's up here. It's a wide fish-eyed camera. When you're actually in the car, you're looking for a narrow helmet. You're then also down here. The barriers are up above you. And so in reality, you've got this very narrow tunnel of vision. So you've got a narrow tunnel of vision. You're driving a racing car on the Monaco Grand Prix. It's been pretty hot this weekend. Your feet are doing the equivalent of a gentle jog on the pedals, throttle and brake, throttle and brake, just dancing, trying to balance the car. At the same time, every time you turn the steering wheel in, you want a straight to relax. The straight is actually a curve. Then you've got the equivalent of about a bag of sugar in each hand. And so you're, you've got this weight. You're doing it for two hours. Your heart rate is about 160 beats per minute. So if you want to really enjoy it like a racing driver, I would suggest you put the champagne down. You jog on the spot for the whole time the race is on. In fact, go pick up two glasses of champagne and you turn your hands as if you're steering. Well, doing the gentle jog, I think you might struggle, actually. <laughs> and then you get a bit of a feel for it. But think about it. That's standing here. That's not concentrating, focusing with all of the different other pressures, with the engineers talking in your ear, telling you the different strategies, trying to adjust all the settings on the steering wheel to adapt the car to the living fact that the circuit's changing, the tire grip's going, the grip of the track is coming up and the other factors. So I have to be honest with you. It is a tough place. It's one that you have to respect. It's one that if you do finish on the podium and you are receiving your trophy from Prince Albert, then you thoroughly deserve it. But whichever way, whoever ends up on that podium, you've got a great race up ahead of you. You're at one of the best Grand Prix ever. You're also in one of the best positions ever. Because uh, this one, as I said right at the beginning, could be history making. It could be the first time a monogast driver wins the one of the Grand Prix. Ladies and gentlemen, 70 laps ahead of you, a lot of fun, a lot of entertainment, have some champagne, just make sure you're rehydrated while they're out there doing their work. But does anybody have any questions? Thank you. Perché sono tutti con full wet alle spalle della...
And now it's time to go home. And just like that, the madness makes its end. Well, enough's happened on this shit show of a trip already. I doubt it could get any worse. <laughs>